this makeup CEO of Glamlight Cosmetics is being called out for not properly paying a person of color what they're owed and she's defending herself. Now, this happened when this creator, Christian Channel, basically popped off and she made a video exposing Glamlight. Now, we're going to hear her side of the story first, and then we're going to hear what the CEO said to defend her brand. And let me know in the comments whose side are you on and what you think of the situation. Now, you may have heard of Glamlight because they did a collaboration with Michaela Negrera, and there's some text message receipts involved in this whole situation as well. Now, I mean, if this were on the video, drop a heart emoji in the comments. Here we go. I want to expose Glamlight Cosmetics because I often feel like as black creators, we are disregarded and devalued and our stories go untold. As of today, I have sold a total of $92,335.58 of Glamlight Cosmetic products on TikTok shop. My total product sold for this brand is 5290 The total views that I've garnered for this brand on my page is 4595000 616 views. Now, I just want to be clear. This was all done without any ad code, without any targeted plan, without any paid promotion, without any contracts. This was just organic, me posting videos, y'all like it, y'all buy it, here we are. In December of 2023 specifically, I want to say I sold about $72,000 worth of Glamlight products. They invited me to their offices, you know, to say thank you and to also discuss future opportunities. During this time, they mentioned an upcoming Black History collection with Fresh Prince of Bel-Air that they wanted for me to be the face of because obviously I'm Black and I was just, you know, doing well. Now again, up until this point, we've had no official business so I did tell them you know okay well you know speak to my manager let's work this out the vibe immediately changed and I was met with well we don't really have the budget to pay you or to do anything and granted I was stunned because in that month of December 2023 specifically I made them around $72,000 and on top of that to my knowledge they had just paid another creator non-black male who just had a birthday at their facilities upwards of a million dollars plus royalty plus if i'm not mistaken they had a collaboration with michaela and i know for sure she's not cheap so you know at that point i was definitely taken aback and definitely disappointed because i mean they haven't even talked to my manager like they didn't even know what my rates were to even deny said rates and on top of that it's like i had already proven myself for free in regards to the gmb that i could even make for that brand and also in that meeting the brand owner tried to smooth things over with i'm also a black woman i'm afro-caribbean or whatever it is that she is and you know i get the struggle i don't understand how she could understand any struggle when i've just made her company seventy two thousand dollars in one month without any sort of advertising or anything like that and she is to my face devaluing me and not even giving me the same common respect or courtesy to even speak to my manager or discuss any sort of possibility for anything financially when it comes to me being the face of a campaign that she wants to ex essentially exploit me as being you know a black person her brand is inclusive her brand is diverse well like it just seems very performative to me but hey that's just me nonetheless at the end of the meeting i did share with them you know hey you guys have me with this particular commission rate that's not my normal commission rate can you please up my commission rate i was told they didn't know how to put me on a targeted plan um but they would try to figure it out okay so i left the meeting weeks went by no update on my targeted plan no update on this Fresh Prince of Bel-Air collection. Okay. My manager emails them to follow up. No response. I didn't get a response until four months and six days later, in which still no update on my targeted plan. My, my plan still has not changed with this brand, although I've not posted any new videos about this brand. Um, as well as that same collection that they told me they had no budget for me for, um, is the same collection that they invited for me to come out to the event for. As if the December meeting was not a big spit in the face, that email was an even bigger spit slash slap in the face. Like, I could have just left it at being disrespected back in December, but to circle the block and not respond for four months and six days, and then to email my manager back with, 
basically nothing I understand that I guess the brand is now taking a woman of color owned, we are diverse, we're about inclusion approach to the brand. Um, however, as the great Kendrick Lamar said, you are not a colleague, you are a colonizer. And that definitely rings true in this case. And I am just so disappointed and I'm so disgusted and the behaviors of the owner of Glam My Cosmetics and just, uh, and, and just of Glam My Cosmetics in general. I hope that you guys do not have a similar experience and I don't wish any hate upon the brand. I'm just sharing my story. Bye. So now that we heard the complaint, let's hear what the CEO of Glamlight Cosmetics had to say. Here's Giselle. This situation has to be addressed. As a woman of color owned brand, it is my responsibility to come here and address these allegations that are being made. So let's go ahead and talk about the situation. This situation has been a huge, huge misunderstanding. First thing is first, I have never told Christian Chanel, not me or anyone on my team, whether via email, text message or DM that we didn't have a budget for her. Late last year, Christian joined our affiliate program and automatically me and the team reached out to her so that we can invite her to our warehouse. We absolutely love her energy and wanted to just meet in person with her and continue working with her. Hi, you guys, we're at Glam Light. Look at like, all of the cuteness that they have set up for me. Like, uh, no team has ever treated me this good. Oh, you're so <laughs> sweet. I personally exchanged phone numbers with her that day and I told her I would love to continue working with you. I have an amazing partnership coming up next year, 2024, um, which is going to be our Freshman's X Glam Light collection. And I would love to have you be part of that collection, whether it's as a model or the face of the campaign or even just do, doing joint promotion for the collection. On December 29th, I received a text message from Christian that she wanted to follow up in regards to maybe discussing the partnership. Because I'm only one person, I'm the CEO of the company, I run finance, I do product development, I help pack orders, I go on live, I do the licensing. I'm already spreading myself thin enough, so therefore I can't handle day-to-day -day communications with influencers. Therefore, I told her I was gonna connect her with my team member, I gave her the information of a marketing assistant who had just joined our team probably two months prior. I delegated the tasks and responsibilities to my assistant to be in charge of coordinating with Christian to make sure that we were able to make this partnership as successful as possible. My assistant received an email from Christian Chanel's manager in January. Even though I wasn't CC'd on that email, she brought it to my attention and asked me how I would like to address it. So therefore I informed her of all, whatever we were going to be offering Christian as a model. And she began to draft that message. You know, I reviewed it for her. It was five paragraphs. It covered absolutely everything um, on all the information that we wanted Christian to know. In addition to giving Christian Chanel my personal phone number, which I rarely do, our VP also gave her his phone number just in case she needed anything from us. She can have the direct communication with us. He reached out to her in February. He was inviting her to an event. Literally, he left. she left him completely on read, never even responded to the messages. Due to unforeseen circumstances, the team member that was in charge of reviewing that communication ended up leaving the team right around the end of January which only left us with one marketing assistant. Our Fresh Prince collection was originally supposed to launch February 2024. However, we made a few internal decisions to postpone the launch to the end of May. Therefore, the campaign that we were going to work on with Christian, we weren't going to be doing any planning for it until a few weeks from now. And here is where the misunderstanding happened. So I approached my assistant and I asked her, hey, what ended up happening with Christian Chanel? Did you, did you ever hear back from the email that you sent to her? And that's when she's like, no, you know, I, I haven't heard back from them. So I said, you know what, let's go back into the email. Let me see what you said to them or what was their response. And as soon as she clicked that email open, I saw that the email was on drafts. And this is a mistake that could happen to any one of us. It was something that it wasn't done with malice. It wasn't, do, it wasn't done with ill intention. On the contrary, this is something that I'm apologizing to her for. This is me giving you an, a sincere apology for something that could have been easily avoided, something that it was an oversight. And the heartbreaking part of the situation is that even if I would have received like a simple text message, hey Giselle, like I didn't hear back from your assistant or telling Anthony, hey Anthony, I didn't hear back from your assistant. I would have had the opportunity to make it right. I would have been more than honored and more than happy to go ahead and address the situation because I was really excited to work with her.
in the email that was sent to her which i'm going to attach right here not once did i ever mention we don't have the budget for you where there was text message where there was phone call we have never said those words to christian chanel because we believe in supporting black content creators and not just black content creators but content creators overall when my assistant sent out that last email we were still unsure if we were going to continue with the campaign overall just because we were more focused on creating tutorials and just hosting an event for micro influencers now let's address the biggest misconception that happened from this misunderstanding in christian chanel's video she mentions that she brought in ninety three thousand dollars in sales for a brand which i'm ridiculously grateful for however as a tiktok shop affiliate she earns 15 percent of the entire sales that happen through the videos that she created she earned thirteen thousand seven hundred dollars which were paid to directly to her by tiktok and i'm over here attaching the screenshot so that you can see the evidence so I just want to clarify that never have I asked Christian Chanel to do this campaign for free. Never have I told her that I don't have a budget for her to create content or do this campaign. On the contrary, as a woman of color on brand and someone that's been doing social media marketing for almost nine years and I do constant campaigns, every single model, hairstylist, MUA that's ever been on my set, whether you're white, black, blue, or red, every single person has been compensated fairly and i'm not just talking about now i'm talking about even when i first started even when i barely could afford to fund my first palette my very first campaign that i literally had to save up for i had to pay those makeup artists i pay the models whatever profit i was going to make went to paying for that campaign so if i was doing that back then i'm definitely not going to be asking for free content now that's not who i am and that's not how i operate a business from the bottom of my heart, I genuinely just want you to be able to go through those messages that I attach here and see where did I ever ask her to pretty much to exploit her. I would never do something like that. I'm all about uplifting content creators. In the past 12 hours, I've been called a colonizer. I've been called a racist and everything in between. I'm not even going to repeat some of the words that I've been called. It really breaks my heart because this situation could have been so easily avoidable. Christian, you could have sent out a message to me directly and said, hey, Giselle, um, I feel left out. I didn't get a response um, when I sent out that one email, and I would have gladly made the situation right by you. Now, let's address the second serious allegation that was made in that video. She stated that I paid a particular influencer over a million dollars plus bonus and royalties uh, to come to our warehouse and promote our products. This Hispanic beauty influencer that I invited to my warehouse was actually last year. The videos that she's referring to were from last year that we just posted now. I had reached out to him because he had been showing genuine love and support through my brand through his reviews. And the same way I did with her, I reached out to him and said, hey, I would love to have you over at my warehouse. Um, I, you know, we got some decorations, very simple decorations from Dollar Tree. We got him lunch. And we have not paid him not even a single dollar, not even four cents. This was literally just hanging out with an influencer and getting to know him better. Two, I have never told her that it was not in our budget and that we couldn't afford her. Three, any content that she created, organic content that she created on her own free will through a TikTok shop, she was fully compensated for. As a woman, we should not be putting ourselves against each other. This situation could have been avoided with just a simple communication. I would have gladly had this conversation with you. I would have apologized in person. I would have jumped on the phone call with you to make it right. Because at the end of the day, that's the least, the least thing I've ever wanted to do was to make someone feel like they were unappreciated, especially someone that was supporting my brand and showing me genuine love. However, I'm not going to come here and give you a blank apology because that's something that I see done very often in the beauty community. Instead, I want to turn a negative situation into a positive situation, one that we can all learn and grow from. Therefore, I'm going to do something very special to show how much we, inclusivity means to me and the change that I want to see in the community. Therefore, I'm personally pledging $100,000 to POC micro-influencers. As I mentioned before, I don't believe in sponsorships just because I think it's unethical to pay someone to uh, review a product and tell them what to say. Therefore, what I have done in the past with these particular pledges is I pay you to create content. I pay you strictly for your tutorial. I send you the product. I agree on a rate with you. And once you post your content, you're free to say whatever you like. With that being said, I just want you guys to know that mistakes do happen and sometimes they don't come from an ill place or with ill intention. It's just human error. Something as simply as not click and send on an email has caused all of this controversy. And you know what? Like I said, I can only grow and learn from here and I hope to continue to be a light of beacon for some people in the beauty community. 
Okay, folks, this is Rich Lux with the hottest news on YouTube. Let me know what you think about that. Are you Team Glamly? Are you Team Christian Chanel? Let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. A lot of people are saying that there was no contract. And from what I gather, it just seems like there should have been more communication on both sides. But I don't know how to feel about this because I'm not in that situation. I'm just at this point just looking back at it all. I do think that Glamlight Cosmetics is just a small independent brand twerking for the Birkin, trying to make it out there and try to do the right thing as possible. And same thing for uh, Kristen Chanel. I think it could have been handled offline, but you know, people love drama and clicks and views. And I think that ultimately this is going to benefit both of them because now more people are talking about the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air collection and they're also talking about the drama with Kristen Chanel. So I think both people are getting views and clicks from it all. But let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. This is Rich Lux with the hottest news on YouTube.